Right there YouTubers, how are you doing? I hope you had a great Christmas and uh, welcome back and here's looking forward to the new year. So this is a first for the channel, this is our first loner rifle. And what we're looking here is cheap second hand PCP air rifling. So first off I'd love to thank Les from Stafford for loaning us this rifle here. Um, this is a Daystate PH6 air rifle and he's fitted it out with a Tasco 6 to 24 40 objective scope on it and a bipod on here so like we said this is cheap air rifling now this rifle was made around about the year 2000 so it's one of the early day state models out there and hence you can get them for a decent price now uh, i think les paid about 200 pounds for this and now i've had a look around and you can actually get these anywhere from the 200 to the 450 mark obviously depending on the quality of it now this rifle has had a hard life it is a daily usage rifle um, it has got some knocks and it's got some bashes and it's got a little bit of rust on it but uh, Les just throws it in the back of his car and he just uses it when he wants to use it but uh, you know it is overall a very nice rifle so like I said this is a cheap way into air rifling second hand so you do have to be careful what you go out and go and find and if you are new to air rifles I suggest you do take somebody with you who knows what they're looking for so let's go into some of the characteristics of this rifle itself so weight wise it is a fairly hefty 8.4 pounds uh, rifle and it is front heavy very front heavy and this is obviously without the scope and the bipod I'm talking about on here but it is a fairly tough hefty rifle and its overall length is uh, three foot pretty much bang on from the butt to the uh, to the muzzle is three foot long so what's the main thing about this rifle here well this is a good example of an early PCP by that we mean we've got the cylinder where the pressurized uh, air is stored and then we have the barrel over the top of it here we have a cocking mechanism and we have a six shot magazine in here and this is in a 2.2 version now you can get these in 177s, 2.2 uh, I'm not sure about the other calipers, uh, calibers out there um, and it is a one piece a wooden stock in beech or walnut but there are some rare ones out there the black versions uh, so if you can get your hands on one of them you're in for a really nice rifle but all that said this is a day state and this is a day state that you can get for you know let's say around the 350 mark if you pick up a really good one and so with that you can expect some decent quality out of it but you've got to remember that this is an early PCP, this is year 2000, so there are some flaws with it and some things that you do need to look out for. But we'll go into them a little bit later. Also, you're going to find that you're going to struggle to find some information on this. Now, I've searched around on YouTube and I don't think I've managed to find a video on the PH6 at all anywhere. Um, and certainly looking around um, doing Google searches, it's difficult to find some info. But I have managed to find the actual uh, instructions that came with this in PDF format and I'll leave them down in the bottom of the link there so that you can take a look at it. And it's mainly how to change the trigger mechanisms on there. So what do we get with this rifle? Well like we said we get a wooden stock and it is ambidextrous obviously this one here is designed for a right handed person because of the groove here uh, but you can get them in opposite way rounds. We've got a fixed butt plate on here, which we can uh, obviously you can modify that if you so wish. We've got some nice stippling around the rifle, and it is a thumbs up position on here. The trigger guard here is metal with a nice bron uh, brass effect bladed trigger, and it is a two stage trigger that is fully adjustable. And like I said, the PDF manual I'll link below will show you how to change all of that. But I don't think this one's been fettled with at all and it is actually quite nice it's a nice good crisp pull on the trigger we have a bolt mechanism here for cycling the shots and we have a fixed now this is the weird bit the fixed magazine so this magazine you cannot take out you cycle the magazine and you put your pellets in and we'll go through that in a bit and then as you pull the bolt it cycles the magazine around take your shot pull the bolt cycle the magazine around so this is one of the unique features about this rifle is its fixed magazine and it does cause a few issues which we'll show later on at the top we have scope rails and again we're limited on scope rails um, we have a sliver of scope rail at the back here and we have a sliver of scope rail at the top and these are standard dovetails on that 
Uh, so it does limit you to what type of scope you can put onto this rifle. Because of you have to over go over with your scope, you need to go over the magazine, the action, and you've got these two small areas here where you can actually attach your scope, which gives you limited movement of your scope and obviously the type of scope you can use, which then obviously maybe affect your eye relief on that. The barrel itself is a floating barrel, and this is in 2.2, and it has a built-in moderator on here. Uh, but the rifle itself is fairly loud um, and there's two little grub screws here that you need to be checking to make sure that they're in place because these tend to get a bit loose and the, and the muzzle, uh, the shroud on it will actually move around a bit so I have, I've had to tighten these up here. And then coming down here we have the actual cylinder itself and the filling port. So what I'm going to do is take you through the filling port on here. To do that you're going to need your trusty dive bottle unless you want to be pumping with a hand pump on that. Um, now this rifle itself does not come with a fill gauge on it um, and it says on the back of here that it's a 207 bar fill. So your dive bottle you're going to need to make sure you have a pressure gauge on there and that's how you're going to check it. And the way that we do it is we just take this handy little port off like so. We have the day state attachment and we plug the day state attachment like so onto there and then we fill via the dive bottle uh, up to 200, It'll normally take it to 200 psi and then when you're finished obviously you release the pressure in your gas bottle, you take off, you put your cap back on and you're good to go. So like we said there is no fill gauge on this rifle itself. Also at the back of the rifle there is usually on here a safety catch behind the bolt in this little area here. You just about make this out. Now with the PH6 because the safety catch was behind the bolt you had to flip it over and that caused a lot of problems for people and they did not like that. So a lot of people removed the safety catch from the PH6. This one has had the safety catch removed from it. So if you are conscious about that and you want to get a second hand rifle one of these then uh, check to see if the safety catch has been removed. If it has and you want it make sure that the owner gives you the safety catch otherwise I'd say walk away because you're not going to find a safety catch for one of these very easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and take you into the magazine section of the rifle and the action and show you how that actually works. Okay, so here we can see that we have the actual action of the rifle itself and you can see it's a bolt action with a bolt here and this bolt has two stages on it. Pull back to you feel the resistance and if you pull further back it will actually cock the rifle itself but we're not going to do that just yet. We have a fixed magazine here and this fixed magazine will not move while the bolt is in the locked position. To move the magazine we need to lift back and pull back to the first stage of the bolt. Now the magazine will turn counterclockwise and you'll see that the magazine is actually numbered one through two, six. And the way that you fill this rifle up is pretty much like the old western way of side loading in your pellets. This little recess here flips in which allows you to push your pellet in, let go, turn the magazine push it in and push the next pellet in. Now this is a fixed magazine so you cannot take this magazine out. So this rifle at the moment is empty so we would put the pellet in, turn it, put the pellet in and turn it. Now you will notice, let's go to position number one, that if we look at position number one, we put our pellet into position number one and then we cock the rifle you notice that it's now flipped to two, number one has gone to the top. Now number one pellet is up the top here, look where the barrel is. The barrel is actually down at number three or number four. So if you want to single load this it is extremely difficult because if you're putting the pellet in number one when you're cocking the rifle it is cycling it anti-clockwise up here but the actual barrel and the pellet that's being loaded is further round so it is a little bit difficult and then when you've got that cycled what we do is we'll cock it and then we'll take the shot 
and you can see the here the report of the rifle there. And as we cock it again, you'll see that the magazine will actually turn and take the next shot. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is we'll just close up onto this and let's just go through some of those parts again. What we have here is the bolt and this part here is where the safety catch would be and it'll be like a switch that flips over left and right and you can see that there's a little grub screw and it's where this safety catch has been removed. So like I said if you want the safety catch check for that. There's your bolt. What we're going to do is show you the easiest way to load this rifle. Now the easiest way to load it I find is to use gravity to help you out. Let's pull your bolt back and that allows you with your other hand to cycle the magazine. You take your pellet so in this case a 2-2 dome pallet and you drop it make sure it's pointy end first because we don't want to shoot ourselves and we put the pellet and just rest it and then with your finger you just push down and push forward with your finger and being careful not to damage the skirt of the pellet until it goes into the receiver and then we can just turn we can take our next pallet we can drop it in and this can be extremely fiddly especially if you've got uh, gloves on and we drop it in and it slides in and then we can turn and continue until you've loaded up all six pallets. Number six, number four, got number four in, number five, and then number six. And number six is in. And then just check that you've counted the six correctly and then you've got all your pallets in. Okay, and one thing to watch out with this is uh, when you have loaded your magazine and you've got all six shots in here, do not push this bolt forward and down thinking that you're ready to then cock the rifle. By pushing this bolt forward, you're actually pushing the pellet into the barrel so that when you then later on come to cock it, you'll cycle the magazine and you'll push a second pellet potentially into the barrel. So be extremely careful with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, PH6 and we're going to give it a bit of a test firing. And I'm going to use three sets of pallets with this and see how it goes on. But we're going to use some Diablo Field Sports and we'll just about make them out. So these are 2-2 two, two, um, running at 16 grains. So these are my favourite pallets. We've also got some Super Domes as well, uh, RWSs. So these are a very popular brand um, and also a little bit cheaper as well. So we'll put some of those through. And then we got some um, RWS Super Points, uh, so some typical hunting air rifles. And again, all in 2-2, and, and these are running at 14.5 grain. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the target out at 25 metres. Uh, we'll try and use some reactive targets out, and we'll fire six shots into each one and see how it go. Uh, the rifle's uh, full of pressure at the moment, so we'll see what the grouping's like on there. Okay, so we've got the rifle fully charged up to uh, just under 200 bar. Um, we're going to shoot six shots at 25 meters. We've got a camera down range as well. Um, we'll do the usual bit of music, a bit of uh, your degree, and messing around with the editing. But um, we'll see how we get on. What we're going to use is the RWS Super, Dome, uh, Super Points first, then the RWS Super Domes, and then we'll go on to the Diablo uh, Field Sports. And we'll just see how we get on at 25 meters. I am going to be using a backrest with this because my shoulder is killing me at the moment and I've got a bit of a wobble on my shoulder so I'm just trying to get this as stable as possible but we'll see how we go up, uh, we're loaded up with the super points at the moment I will probably put a little bit in the montage with me loading it just to show you what the fun it is and uh, we'll get crack on with it, see you in a minute Okay, next up RWS Super Domes. Bolt halfway back, take your pellet, slide it in, turn your magazine. 
I find it easier if you count out your pallets because of its difficulty when you've actually got a pallet inserted in the magazine because it's a fixed magazine. So if you count out six, you know you definitely got six and you're not double loading the magazine or trying to. It does get easier after a time, but with cold fingers or gloves on, I can see this being a quite a bit of a pain in the neck. But you got to remember this is early early air rifling and um, you can probably see why it didn't catch on this method but let's see so here we go RWF super, super domes now Luckily the final shot knocked the target off, but uh, let's go and pick them up and then we'll do a bit of a review and see how we got on. So how did we get on? I can't exactly remember which one was which, but uh, I'll put it on the video and I'll label them so that you can see. But we got the Sharpies and the, and the uh, Super Domes here from RWS, you know, very common pellets. And it's not great, let's be honest, that's not great. You know, we're talking 25 metres here and... Uh, yeah, we're looking at over an inch, I think that was the Sharpies, over an inch group. And then the Super Domes were well, a little bit tighter, but, you know, I've got one dropper here, but it's not brilliant. But then we move on to the Diablos, and yet again, the Air Arms Rifles. Yeah, and I was not taking my time with this shoot, and you can see my shooting style's awful. And uh, it's been a good Christmas, uh, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. The same circumstances, the same scenarios, the same fill pressure, yeah. So... 16 year old gun, this gun has been used and abused, trust me, it's been used and abused, you can tell with the marks and everything on it, but, you know, it is accurate, and then you'd expect that from a day state rifle, and especially at the price point you're looking at second hand, yeah, very, very capable, very, very capable. So what we're going to do is just going to move on now and do a bit of a summing up and a review of this rifle. So, what do I think of this rifle? Well, there's a, a lot of good things and there's a lot of bad things about this rifle. Um, so, the good things. The good things are, you can get it cheap. It's a day state. It is quality, even back in the 2000s. I know there's a lot of stories and that lot, but this is a good quality rifle. It feels quality. It's got a good crisp pull on the trigger. When you release a shot down range and you hit whack into the target, you know it's going. And with the right pellet, it is accurate, even in an amateur's hands like mine who can't shoot for toffee. It's accurate, it's very, very good. And of course the price as well that you can get this rifle for. You know, you can pick these up fairly cheap now, into PCP. Um, obviously you're gonna need a dive bottle or a stirrup pump. That's gonna be fun, stirrup pump. But um, yeah, you're gonna, you, you are, uh, you can pick these up cheap, fairly cheap on here. Um, and obviously good quality ones. Um, like I said, it's accurate. It's very accurate. It makes a great first PCP for somebody. Background, uh, background plinking, um, even just standard ratting stuff. If you're in a static location, this is an awesome little sniping rifle. Great. Which sort of brings me on to one of the bad points about it. It is heavy. It is heavy. Certainly, you know, ignore the fact that I got the bipod on it and the scope on it. It is certainly heavy, front heavy, and at three foot long, you certainly do feel it on there. Now, if you're a big butch latch, that works out, then you'll be fine with that, etc. But, you know, for me, walking around all day with a farmyard with, uh, with the farmyard with this rifle, it will get extremely tiresome on there. 
Um, it certainly is a chunky rifle on here and I can see and I know that the person that owns this rifle spends a lot of the time with this rifle in a static position with the bipod on taking out rats which is absolutely perfect perfect for that taking out if you know pigeons are in certain areas and you haven't got much movement to go around then you can set yourself up in a hide with this rifle and it'll be perfect on here um, one of the major major bad points about this is you know the elephant in the room is this mechanism the loading mechanism the magazine mechanism it it's not great let's let's be honest it's a fixed magazine I know this is back from the year 2000 when magazines were a sort of like luxury item and this is one of the early, first early renditions and this rifle did really appeal to the Americans with the side loading the old John Wayne sort of method of loading it but it has its flaws massive flaws with it number one you can't take the magazine out that means you can't actually take the pellets out once you've loaded them so the only way to clear this gun to make sure it's 100% safe is to cycle it six times and shoot it six times to make sure that you've gone through every single port in the magazine and to make sure that there is nothing left in that magazine you can't dial the magazine around and fish the pellet out you can't do that it's not possible so if you're one of these people that go down to a range or a club where you have the range officers that will say stop shooting unload your weapon <laughs> you can't you have to put your hand up and say excuse me I've got six more that I'll get rid of please because I can't make this safe so that is one of the biggest problems with this and also with the loading on it because if you have to load it through here it is takes time you get used to it but there's a great danger of damaging the skirts of the pellets as you slide and push them in there now you can turn the rifle up at an angle and drop them in to help use gravity to help you push them in but it does get a bit a bit difficult to do that um, so I have actually damaged a couple of pellets when I've tried to push them in with my fingernail just to make sure they slide in and just dented the little skirt of the lead pellet uh, which obviously going to cause you problems in flight with the rifle Another problem with this as well, that magazine loading on here, is that uh, if you just want to do a single shot, it's extremely difficult to do because of you put your pellet into number one and it, can, and it cycles anti-clockwise. When you push the bolt back forward again, then it is actually cycling the magazine and pushing a pellet in. So you put it into port number one, it actually takes, and I'm still trying to work out if it's two or three cycles to get that pellet into the barrel position so it's pushed in. Now, yes, you can get away with that by pushing it into number one and then manually turning the magazine if you can work out how many clicks it needs to go to get it into the barrel position to shoot it. But you can get around that, but uh, it's a bit difficult. And of course, still with the magazine section on here, and it is the elephant in the room with this rifle, is if you've got gloves on, you're out shooting, you've used up your six shots, you've got to reload this so that means you've got to take your gloves off to get the pellets in there you haven't got a spare magazine or anything like that but we've got to remember this is an early PCP from day state uh, one of the first with the magazine systems on it and you know at the end of the day if you're there and you're just out in the farmyard in a static position then you've got the capabilities to reload this actually and with a better practice I've been firing this now for about two to three weeks I've got used to loading this up you do get used to it but one of the things I do not like about it is that you can't make this gun safe without firing off the pellets that are in there. You can't just take the magazine out, empty it out, and maybe just fire that one off that's in the chamber. You, you've got to go through the whole cycle with this. Another bad point with the rifle, um, and it really does depend on the type of scope you've got, is these scope rails are too small. You get very, very limited positioning for your scope. So for example, this scope is set up for the owner of the rifle and he struggles with eye relief. He's trying to get the scope further forward, but he can't actually get this scope any further forward because you can see he's right up against the butt here. He's right up against the butt of the scope on the scope rail mounts here and he can't go any further forward. So you are very limited in the type of scope you can use here and your eye relief back to here. So it is one to watch out for. Um, certainly, if you do get this second hand from someone, see whether or not they're going to give you the scope with it. Check it out, see if it works for you, but think carefully about the type of scope that you are going to put on here. I struggle with this. The eye relief is not further enough forward for me. Uh, the same with the owner of this rifle. But you position yourself and you get used to it on there.
So okay, what else is there about the rifle? Well, it's not exactly quiet, and some people do report that when you fire it, you can hear this spring twang, the piston twang. In here. I personally, I don't know, really know what I'm looking for in that, um, but it is it is a loud rifle. Um, in your backyard, plinking, you know, people are definitely going to know what you're doing with this. Luckily, I've got good neighbours and they know that I do this, but it certainly does make a good hell of a whack when it's letting go, even with the built-in muzzler, uh, the suppressor on the front of it on here. Another thing to watch out for, as we mentioned before, is quite a lot of time the rifle, these rifles come with the safety removed and it's like a catch, that, a lever that goes here. Um, so, you know, there is no real way, you know, at the end of the day, if somebody's removed the safety, they've removed it, and you need to be aware of that. So you check to see if you are getting a second-hand one that it has got the safety on here. But overall, this rifle is for, if you can pick one up for two to three hundred pounds, maybe three fifty pounds in mint condition, this rifle is awesome. Absolutely awesome. It's heavy, yes. It's got problems with the magazine, the system on there compared to the modern day stuff, but you know what? For background, background, uh, backyard, for backyard plinker, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. And um, yeah, I wouldn't mind picking one of these up myself. In fact, I might not even give this back to him. Oh, cool. Don't worry, Les. You'll get it back very soon. So overall, what do I think of this rifle? Love and hate. Love and hate. I love the looks of it. It's a beautiful, beautiful looking rifle. It looks the dog's danglies. It has some flaws, of course it does. You know, the magazine system on there, you know. You've got to remember, it's back from the 2000s. It's a bolt action, it's beautiful, it's nice, it's smooth, and it's accurate, deadly accurate, with the right pellets and the right skill level, which I'm lacking a little bit of, but it makes me look good on there. And you pick one of these up for 300, 350 pounds for a good mint one, you can't go anywhere wrong with that. All you've got to do is make sure that you've got the fill-in accessories, a dive tank or a pump for it, background uh, back uh, backyard plinker yeah it's great it's great for that it's a great introduction on it at all you just obviously got to be aware of what you're getting yourself into and wherever you read the reviews on this you will always hear about this up here and hopefully this video has shown you up there but if you can get around that and you're happy to live with that this rifle I think you would be extremely pleased with so anyway Hopefully you've enjoyed our first loaner review uh, review video. Um, the channel is doing great thanks to you guys. Our subscriptions are climbing and climbing, our views are climbing and climbing, and the comments down below are absolutely great. It seems we've got rid of a lot of the trolls, and um, so we're getting some great discussions, some great comments on there. So please like and subscribe to the channel if you think uh, you would want to loan me a rifle to uh, do a review like this on second hand rifle as long as it's sub 12 foot pound give me a shout leave me a comment down below i will also put a link to the video um, describing how this channel works and if you want to help with that but um, until then next time thank you very much and see you in the next video